Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 27 of Death Space Fill in the Void. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! How was your New Year's? Did you do something big? Did you stay at home? Do you have COVID? <laughs> it seems like everyone has COVID right now with this Omicron. If you do, I hope everyone's okay. I hope you're vaccinated and boosted. That certainly seems to be helping people. We were thinking about doing some stuff on, on New Year's Eve, but we instead decided to mix, make a nice meal, made some steak, some mashed potatoes with some chives and rosemary and garlic in there, some butter. I'm becoming a real good chef, I'll tell you that. I'd love to brag about that. <laughs> and then Jamie had gotten me a fire pit for Christmas. So just sitting outside, enjoying being in the South in the winter, burning things. Oh, I had a good time with that. Of course, once I, once I got it, I went out and bought a chainsaw a hatchet, which wasn't big enough, so I went back for a full axe. Then got like a stump kindling maker that I hit with a hammer to break up some firewood. All out. So excited. We even burned our Christmas tree, which smelled fantastic. It smelled so good. Just wow. If you've never done that before, it makes you realize how much of a fire hazard your Christmas tree is. Because it didn't just go on fire, it like exploded on fire. But yeah, there's nothing more calming than just looking at a fire, hanging out, smoked a cigar out there. I'm finally becoming the man I wanted to be. <laughs> well, I hope you had a, a great, happy, and, and safe New Year's Eve. We've got another great interview for you today. I interviewed Gabriella Fuchs, who runs a project called Interstella, basically meaning that we're made of stars, which we are, which is kind of cool. Basically, just to give you some quick background, she of course explains all this. She looked at her father's ashes under a microscope and the picture is so stunning. I'll definitely share it on the on the show's social media or you can go to her Instagram, Interstella, I-N-N-E-R-S-T-E-L-A. It's very shocking and, and she tells the story of how and why she did this and now she does this for other people, people whose bodies have been cremated. She can take a similar image of your loved one and it'll look different and, and unique to them. It looks like a picture from the Hubble telescope. I'm serious. It's incredible. And of course, people ascribe different meanings to it based on their thoughts and, and their beliefs. And that's perfectly, that's what it's for, right? It's, it's for you to, you can assign whatever meaning you want to it, but... The pictures are beautiful. And so, yeah, we had a very thought-provoking discussion uh, about grief and, and her process and, and, and how this project has changed her outlook on life. Before we make our way over the interview, just want to remind you to check the show out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you're liking the show, to please remember, rate and review it. All right. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy. Joining me now on the podcast is Gabriella Fuchs. Did I say that right? I, I've messed it up already. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Excellent. Okay, great. Joining me from Mexico City, Gabriella, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. This is very good. You doing this podcast and this closing, this closing, the whole subject around grieving. We so need this. Yeah, it has been a very interesting ride from starting this podcast and, and just learning a lot about death and, and a lot of people expressing that they don't feel like there is a space for us to communicate as a as a general society. Why don't you start by telling everyone a little bit about yourself to get things started? Yes, yes. So as you mentioned, we connected uh, through social media. I have this Instagram account, this Inner Stella, and the name comes from our inner stars, basically. So what, when my father passed in 2012, I remember it was very interesting because we went to, to leave his ashes at his farm. He had a horse farm. And when we were leaving the farm, there was a need in me to like, just take his ashes with me and mm. look at them into a microscope. And I was, I didn't even wonder where those ideas were coming from. I just did it, you know? Mm -hmm. But I kind of had to sneak away from my family to do that because how can you explain anyone? Like, hey, I'm gonna take a look at my father's ashes in, under a microscope. Right. You know? <laughs> and that was kind of like a very, it was gated. 
kind of thing. It was, I was doing it. I didn't want to tell anyone. It was kind of weird, you know? Are you a scientist? Do you have like a microscope in your house or? No, no, I'm not a scientist. My family, all my uncles and aunts and I mean, my parents are doctors. Or my father was a doctor. My mom is a doctor. Everyone is a scientist, physicist, biologist, genetist. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> genetics. They, they work yeah, it works in genetics. There you go. That's a way to get around. It. Yeah. <laughs> and so I guess there was this, there's always been this very inquiring part of me. And mm -hmm. I always need to kind of like see things for myself in a way. Mm. But I really couldn't understand what was going on because I was feeling emotions I never felt, you know? How so? You're, you're well, grieving the loss of your father. My father was like, like having an arm chopped and having oh. to learn to live without it you know it was it was weird it's like well I remember I was lying in bed one day and, and I heard someone walking I was at my mom's house I was like huh that's interesting I'm never gonna listen to my father father's footsteps you know because different mm. people walk in a different way so you're rearranging your life basically and it okay. is very weird I think mm -hmm. yeah and I've never had such a intense process of grief i have lost a lot of people in 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 my life but that was that one was a powerful very meaningful loss and it really changed my life to a very open space i guess in my mind what i mean is like i took his ashes i didn't know how to explain that to my family so i just called my aunt one of my aunts she's in the physics department in the university and i said like hey i need to look at my father's ashes under a microscope and as any good scientist, she wasn't weird about it. She was just like, okay, but I don't have my microscopes. I do physics, theoretical <laughs> physics. Thanks, Baker. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we don't do that stuff. And she said like, but if you want to see ashes, you can light the cigarette and you'll see how they look. They're black, white, and gray. And then she's like, well, I'll put you in touch just for you to talk to people. Mm -hmm. So I talked to people in chemistry, people in biology, all PhDs or like very accomplished and educated people. And they all told me I was going to observe uh, black, white and gray and that human ashes had been observed under microscopes since the beginning of the microscopes. And that was the result. Mm -hmm. So after these phone calls and I was told not that I couldn't use them because I was not a student at the university, nor was I a researcher. But like two weeks later, the director of uh, biology called me, and not biology, the, the microfilm lab at, at the biology faculty. Mm -hmm. called me and he said like, okay, I, I want you to know that you're going to see black, white, and gray, but that I'm going to support you in this one. And I'll explain you when you get here. So when I got there, he said, I don't want you to think I'm helping you. I want you to think that I'm doing this with you because when I received the email, from your aunt. I tried to take a sample of my father who died just two days after yours and I couldn't. I broke down in tears. Mm. So that said, against all odds, I'm a, an, I'm a cinematographer. I've been working on film and, and photography for like 12 years and I've, I'm a very nerdy person and I study a lot. So I was like, okay, but okay. So let's look at them. And when we looked at them, we discovered the universe. And if you see images of what I'm telling you, which are in this Instagram, or if you look up my name, you can find it. The, the resemble of, of our loved ones to Nebula is mesmerizing. But what happened to me in that moment, not only I was I in awe with the images, like an entire quest, like a process of questioning came into me because when you feel there's a separation, I started to feel a reconnection. Mm. You know? Well, to provide the context for, for people who haven't seen it, and I do encourage you to go to the Interstellar uh, Instagram account, because it, it looks like it's an image taken from, let's say, the, the Hubble telescope, right? It looks like you're looking at a nebula or, or the formation of stars or that, that kind of image. So... Yeah, I, I wanted to just provide that context. So why was that image different? Do you, I mean, you're around all of these scientists. Uh, yeah, I'll let you take it away. I'm so curious what the answer is. 
Well, the answer, the answer is it's big and complicated, but um, I, I have a short answer for that. I don't think it was observed a lot, you know, like ashes on the microscope, because we do have taboos around death. Mm -hmm. When I when I left the, the microscope that time, when I saw my father's ashes, I was happy. And this was very soon after he died. I was feeling complete, you know? How so? Why? Why? What about that image changed your grief? Well, I guess this is something in our DNA, honestly, because as humans, since beginning of our human time, we've been looking up to the stars mm -hmm. to find answers, to guide us, to explore. I mean, we mm -hmm. we have an like like a very intimate relationship with space. I mean, there wouldn't be any other way because we are it. We're part of it. Right. Of course. Yeah. And our bodies <laughs> used to be oh, in, in stars and, and exactly. elsewhere. Yes, exactly. So that's what I meant when you you come in. I was coming into this lab with all these emotions of disconnection. Of like I lost my father. I was skip hopping when I left the microscope because I was feeling connected and complete. And also, also I felt like, wow, I need to share this, you know, mm -hmm. but I, it wasn't, it was like exactly like the same kind of way when, when I was like, I need to look into his ashes. It was like, I didn't question it, but honestly, I haven't used a microscope since I was in high school, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> uh, so it was kind of like just something in my mind that just woke up like mm -hmm. that. Uh, had this idea or something it, it's actually more like an instinctive thing like when you're hungry and you don't say like hmm, maybe i'm hungry you know you're hungry you're feeling it right and when i left the microscope i was like i'm just an accomplice i'm not doing anything here this thing that i just saw has a path of its own you know so for a year oh yeah but i came with the camera to my aunt she was in her office and she's like look at this and she's such a beautiful scientist, but kind of hermetic, you know? And, mm -hmm. and she's like, hmm, I wouldn't think of that. This, okay, this is very interesting. And that was all she said. <laughs> so I love that because we're like that in our family. We're like very loving, but some of us could be a little like, people would say like you're cold, but it's not. It's just, it is just a different way of communicating, you know? Mm -hmm. Very scientific <laughs> method. Exactly. This is true, so that's how I react. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So I went home and I didn't know how to explain to my mother, who lived 40 years with my father, that I had stolen some of the ashes and made this breakthrough. But at the time, I didn't know it was a breakthrough. How did she react? No, I didn't tell them. Not oh, my, okay. My sister and brother for like almost, I don't know, I think it was like eight months or something. Oh, wow. Because also that J digesting all these images or this thing, because I was in the microscope and I kept, kept racking focus and I kept floating in the universe. And it was such an experience. Mm -hmm. I spent like four hours just observing the like, universe, right? It was the deepest meditation ever. So, but I didn't know what it meant. I, I it really broke kind of like my Ruby cube, you know, it was mm -hmm. like, well, I know nothing about life and death or anything and I just had to digest all that information for myself because I I was asking people especially like the science community and they were like well we don't know why this is happening we don't there's no meaning it's science it's elements maybe it's this maybe it's that you should mm -hmm. go and research you know do some research yourself so I remember my good friend I have a meditation teacher and he lives up in Canada and, mm -hmm. and my very good friend says like hey you want to be close to your teacher now the art grant is open why don't you just apply for it? And it's in Canada. And I was like, I don't know, but with what? And she said, like, just write something about your dad's sashes, photographs and videos. So I, I did, and I got the scholarship. And that's where everything became like a deep research. Like, right. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that was a massive one for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was at the Banff Center, which is a very big art incubator um, and a beautiful i mean all the pictures i've seen in Banff. if you're going to go study somewhere that's the place to study right like that must have been wonderful exactly so it wasn't really studying it was just like go there create and figure it out 
you know mm -hmm. so i was there for three months beautiful mountains and nature so mm -hmm. it was very healing and i came up with this experimental installation and it was very beautiful but the bam center did documentary on my project because they were like blown away Mm -hmm. And that video became vir viral and people from all over the world started reaching out to me to make a picture of their beloved one's ashes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow, well, thank you for the trust before anything else. But I was kind of like nervous. It's like no one has done it before. And what if only my father's ashes are like that? And yes. so that's when I started doing a bit of scientific research. I started getting into the science world. I accepted first from my close friends and uh, started going to the university. When I was back in Mexico, I started going to the university, talking to scientists, doing like mass spectrometries. That means like counting the electrons. Why are they glowing? Like, because everyone is so different and everyone glows with different colors. The colors and the lights come from the ashes. I don't do anything to them. Mm -hmm. So, all the whys and hows, you know, I needed to solve them. So I also had grants in Concordia University in Montreal. I worked a little bit with people at ASU and a lot of like the university here in Mexico, the advanced microscopy lab here. So a lot of research took, 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 connecting the dots. But then after like five years of doing that, I was like, I lost track. I, I never started doing this for getting a scientific paper mm -hmm. and people kept asking me to to do the the photographs of the ashes and a good friend of mine died and so his cousins and mother asked me to do the picture of him and I was there in the lab and I started cheering because I was like wow people keep asking me to do that I cannot just look away from that you know mm -hmm. And so the journey of like doing it bigger and bigger for people started there. My, my friend's cousin had an idea. It's like, why don't we film people when they get the ashes and they deliver them and when they get them. And so we started doing that with our friends, only with close people. And you can see the reactions and the faces and they come like gloomy and gray. And then there's a brightness that starts growing. And it's very meaningful because you feel connected because it's so intimate, right? It's, mm -hmm. it really comes from the ashes of a person you knew and that image, whatever it represents to me, it's not going to be the same that it represents to you because you never met my father. Mm -hmm. But for me, they are mind blowing. And if you have lost someone, that image of your loved one for you will be like, like a portrait. That's when I, 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 I realized that I was on the wrong path and I had done everything I could, which actually all this scientific process actually helped me. Things in life are a process and sometimes we're too eager to get results and just having more patience, patience with pain. For me, that was an experience, right? Just have patience with, with my pain, with all the people that come to me. It's just like, I mean, we all have the right to do whatever we want with our emotions if we're not hurting anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to explore them. And I don't think we have that in our current situation with the whole process of going to the funerary home or the process of grieving. And, and we sometimes we get ashamed of how we deal with it. Yeah. And people tell me like a lot of s stories like, I. When my grandfather died, I did this and put some ashes on a drink and I drank, you know, but they're very ashamed to tell this to people. And for me, after what I learned is like, it's okay. Only you know how to get out of your pain. Listen to your gut. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. You trust your gut with walking down the street at night to not go a certain way or in finding a significant other, you're, you're trusting your gut. Why not trust your gut through grief as well? exactly and a lot of people tell me about but oh what you did is so beautiful but like what i did is so shameful and i said no because the only difference is that the result i got is flashy you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but what if it was i don't know something disgusting or anything 
it mm. doesn't matter it was my own process yeah and, and now people is like using my experience as their process and and it's beautiful to see to to connect with them and and there's like a whole thing that i i've been learning is like we don't talk about it we don't talk about it yeah and it, and it's it hurts so many people that we don't if, if we did, I feel like we'd be less afraid of death. We'd be more in tune in our emotions and, and have a plan or to find a way through, right? And that's why I started this to like take a collection of stories of people because maybe something you hear in one episode helps you, but uh, you hear something different and, and you kind of piecemeal these different stories into coming up with some ideas that can help you in, in, in your journey. Correct. Yeah. So I just want to tell you a little story before the name of my project was Interstellar. Mm -hmm. It was dead soon. Oh, you know? okay. That was the name of it for almost. Okay. So for eight years, I just changed it this year, nine years. It was dead soon mm -hmm. because everyone, I'm going to be dead soon. You're going to be dead soon. Mm -hmm. And what I realized when my when I was in my grief process was that I was more open. I mean, I didn't really realize this when I was grieving after just looking back mm -hmm. and how much I valued people that came and gave me a hug, you know, mm -hmm. and all the little things I, I, I started valuing them a lot. So. I started with this theory and this is why the project was called dead soon is like if we look at each other right now and when we finish this call we say goodbye but knowing that this might be the last time we, we start strengthening the muscle of empathy mm -hmm. absolutely you know? we start connecting because the thing is that we're so afraid of facts but facts are facts you cannot change. but if we work our lives with facts, we have, first of all, more security. And second of all, security gives you the ability to be open and kind and empathetic. I think so. And I changed the name because people was shocked. And they will call me and ask me, like I would send them this little envelope with container that said dead soon. People were really shocked. So also I was like, well, I was brought up like that but not all of us. Mm -hmm. So, and I realized I wasn't being empathetic. I wasn't supporting people during their process. Mm -hmm. So I rebranded the whole thing and changed it for something that actually spoke about the project itself and not about the truths I believe in. It's a great name. Just like we're all made up of the universe. Stop. I feel, yeah, I feel like it's a, it perfectly encapsulates what you're doing. Yeah, I always encourage people to explore their own emotions and, and, mm -hmm. and their pain. And there's nothing to feel ashamed of. No, it's we like you said, it's not hurting. Of pointing fingers at feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. People hurting. Right. It should be scared of so many things we do as humans. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, I'm curious. I have a bunch of questions for you. I'm curious, what is the actual process, right? I'm thinking of a microscope. How do you get that image? It's a patented process, so I cannot tell you. Okay, but it's some kind of camera built into the, the uh, I'm it's sure. It's a normal camera and a normal microscope. Oh, wow. And I don't, don't add anything to the images, but after all this research doing and like all these universities, uh, they actually advise like, you should patent it. This is great. So now it's patented. And so, yep, I just go to the microscopy lab at the faculty. I do everything I do is uh, the university because I believe that although everyone is entitled to believe whatever they, they feel, from the images, mm -hmm. I, I am only delivering an image. There is no spirit or aura, but if we feel that way, that's okay. You sure, know? yeah. It, just like any other art, uh, it's open to the viewer's perspective. Yeah. Yes. Exactly, yeah. But a lot of people have asked me if, if, if it's like that. And especially, I remember there was this criminal who passed away and what if he's awful? What if he looks different? And I was like, I, no, why? We're all part of this universe, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do atrocious things as humans. That's part of our nature. And our nature and our thing should be to avoid doing this, right? To be more conscious and ethical and respectful. But if we go to the facts, we sometimes are horrible. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that is a fact, of course. That is a fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it only comes from our pain or our own ignorances. And I think, yeah, I, I, I do everything backed up with science because, first of all, I, I, I don't close the gates for anyone on their belief, you know, on their beliefs and their, and their school of thought. It's like, we're open to this, you know, we should mm-hmm. be able to think, feel, believe without hurting people, anything we want. Right. Yeah, that's a yeah. great message. And also like right now, I'm collaborating with this amazing genius person who lives in Santa Barbara and, and we met in Montreal in an innovation summit and he invited me in to do a residency artist, uh, an artist residency in Santa Barbara. Mm-hmm. There's a center there for science and research. And now he is testing he's going to be testing and the physiological stimuli and the way the brain behavior when people receive the images of their beloved ones oh very so that we can scientifically prove that there is a segregation or of whatever dopamine we don't know serotonin but that mm-hmm. it actually helps people to release the hormones that actually make you feel better right well, so you, you mentioned how you were trying to understand why this image was different than scientists expected to see something like the ashes of a cigarette. So did you have an answer? Is it just that there is carbon or, or some other element in the acid, uh, ashes that is, is becoming or getting picked up? I mean, it's a, it's, it's a tough question because, no, I mean, the general question is there's an excitation Mm-hmm. So the electrons are in the, um, the protons are in the outer orbit and they spin so fast that they get out of orbit, jump into the inner orbit and the inner orbit uh, electrons push them away. Say, so what, what are you doing here? What is causing that? Mm-hmm. And why is it there? It is, it is tough because see, when we eat different things, we breathe different air, we drink different water, and all of that has like a trace elements, right? And then you burn them, you calcinate them. One of the first theories uh, people started saying in, in the internet is like, oh, it's phosphorus because phosphorus is it's fluorescent. You know, it's like, yeah, well, phosphorus has a gamma of colors and you can light a match and there you go, it's gone, mm-hmm. right? right? These went through like 103,000, uh, 1300 Celsius. Mm-hmm. So you destroy a lot of the qualities of all elements, basically. Got it. Much so, like when you toast bread, it, it it becomes something different, right? Like when when the body has gone through something like that, it's not as it once was. Exactly, and the elements and everything is not as it once was. And there is a lot of research still that we're working on doing, but it is really, really, really like we're so different. We believe mm-hmm. we live in some different environments that to get like a standard answer to your question would be, I don't know, it would take many, 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 many years to come up with that answer. Mm. Right now, it's a very, there's a lot of answers to that question. Sure. But the main takeaway is that seemingly, I mean, at least in your experience and, and what you've witnessed other people, there's some kind of profound change when, when people who are grieving see these images. For yeah. you, can you go back and, and kind of describe how you felt changed from before this image to when you're looking at it for the first time? For sure. How did, how did that change your grief or your perspective on life? I remember before I saw the image, the images or the ashes, reality was kind of off, you know? It's like you're working, walking, eating, but you're kind of not there somehow. I don't know if if that makes sense. Well, when grief, when you're grieving, you can feel like you're half in the spirit world where you're just kind of floating through in this fog or this haze. So do you think that that's how you felt or or that's how I felt in the past when I've been grieving? Sort of, but I was also very like present in the way that I was observing a lot. I remember I was sitting one day, I, I just was in the park and I don't know, like, I just needed to stop. Hmm. I sat on, 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 the, on the park, on the floor, and started observing people. 
and then like their movement was almost off you know like with the delay or something i don't mm. know it was weird my thing is that i i am very curious and i start questioning what are these people thinking about mm. two days ago i was playing like that in this same park or something or mm. walking the dog or what do what do we think all day what am i doing like what is the like i was just a thousand miles per hour questioning everything in my life that's what i mean like i wasn't here but i was yeah were you like that before your dad passed were you are you have you always been the type of person to question things or did that his death change you in that way make you start to question things i was but i don't think i did did it with the humbleness i was doing it back then Mm, okay and that's a very different way of doing things of questioning because sometimes most of the time we're questioning people to prove we're right Mm mm-hmm not to find answers, just to prove we're right. Mm-hmm. So at that very moment, I was just open to questioning. I wasn't expecting anything. I, I wasn't trying to prove anything, you know? I was just, just there, like trying to figure out the meaning of my own life, to give it some kind of sense or direction. And it was very painful. I don't know, I, I, I would be okay. And then out of nowhere, I would start crying which is normal for grieving, you know? You remember something, you were walking through a street that you walk with that person and and all these images, all these memories come. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna remember, you're not gonna hear your father's footsteps. It's little things like that, right? You know, how they fall asleep in the couch or or this or that, what their favorite foods, there's just anything could trigger a reaction like that. Yeah, and, and, and I want to share with you something very intimate, but I remember sometimes we're so tough with ourselves and our emotions and our process, and we don't even know that f- until it's like really 20 years after, you know? Mm. But I remember I said, okay, so if I ever get married, he's not going to walk me yeah. in the alley. Yeah. And I didn't have a partner for six or seven years. Just be- that was in the back of my mind. I guess a lot of us, do these things to ourselves and and it's just i guess it's unfair because we're trained to blame ourselves and to feel guilty and but it, it's got nothing to do with us we are all going to die and it's it's the impermanence there's 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 a beauty in it i remember i would tell this to myself like if everything is impermanent then this pain has to be impermanent and That's i would such a beautiful thing that. yeah, yeah. I I did an episode on how the universe itself will end, where I interviewed a physicist who talked about how eventually every atom will be infinitely away from every other atom. And if that's true, the bad day that you're having won't stay, right? I haven't even thought of that. I love that, that everything is impermanent, meaning the bad stuff. (laughs) The bad stuff, yeah. The bad people, the bad guys, and and your bad day. Mm -hmm. Everything is impermanent, right? And then that's what I'm telling you. It's like you become very open because not only you are impermanent and and who knows, like uh, maybe I cross the street. I don't want that, but like <laughs> something happens, you know? The water I drank is impermanent because it's already in my body. It's changing its composition inside my body. It's being separated. And these images, I've, I had a lot of scientists and people telling me, it's just like what Carl Sagan said. We're made Mm. of star stuff, but you just prove it visually. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not something we should be. I mean, it is, it is like, wow, surprising, you know, but if then we deal with facts, it's like, it's not. The universe was created just like that. A massive, very, 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 very strong fusion of a lot of heat Mm -hmm. and boom. And it makes all the sense. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, it looks similar to the space. Yep. We actually are made of the same elements as all of the universe we know of. Yeah, it's so incredible to think. And yeah. it's like Hermes said, like, as above, as below, a lot of philosophers and scientists and individuals, because it's not like these are unique ideas. Mm-hmm. Most of us, we question these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's inherent to being human to question humanity and, and, and your place in the world and, and what it all means, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it makes sense. It's just like, yeah, it's just a photo of that 
sense, you know, yeah. to help well, us make it, give it more sense. Right. Absolutely. If you're listening to this podcast, one of the reasons may be because you're interested in having your death or a, or a loved one's death be celebrated in, in a different way to, to think outside the box a little bit. I, I personally really like the idea of that. And that's why I'm partnering with a company called Spirit Vessel, who creates these guided personalized ceremonies for yourself or, or a loved one. Well, just to give you a little bit of background, Spirit Vessel is a sister owned company that is bringing sacred ceremonies around death back into the home in a beautiful and meaningful way. I love it. I love the idea of of making it more personal. And I've experienced wakes and funerals that it felt so cold and, and wish that I could inject a little bit more personality and, and more storytelling to help the grieving process. Spirit Vessel has these handcrafted ceramic urns and personalized celebration of life ceremony packages that can be done in the comfort of your home or through webcasting services. Whether you're grieving the loss of a loved one, preparing for an imminent death, or taking steps to plan for your own death, Spirit Vessel provides resources to help you respond from your heart with creativity and courage. So basically you can design your own creative and, and personalized intimate ceremony that represents the person who you're celebrating. And there's also tips to help people who are grieving going forward. So whether you're interested in the celebration of life ceremony packages, or you'd like to check out or order one of their handcrafted ceramic urns, which are so cool, by the way, check out Spirit Vessel. And if you do order anything, feel free to use the promo code DEATHSPACE for free shipping. Uh, if you're like me, it can be really hard to come up with the words to say in a card. I know, I always laugh too, because talk about 10 years of improv training down the drain. <laughs> Not being able to come up with anything. But especially, that's especially, but that's especially, but that's especially so. I don't know why I can say especially. There you go. Perfect. I can say it. <laughs> During times of grief or when someone loses someone. But thankfully, there's the card studio. There are no words to comfort in a time of deep loss, but you send a card because you care. Yeah, because as we've learned through this podcast, sending something, saying anything is better than saying nothing. The card studio creates your message, writes it in your card and mails it for you. See, they'll help you out. You have the intention, the cardist has the words, bing, bang, boom. All you do is pick the card and tell why you're sending it. No anxiety, all care. For a message from your heart, but not your hands. Just sit back and enjoy your relationships. You know, you don't have that awkward feeling like, ah, was that too much? Did I say too much? Am I talking too much? As I'm literally talking too much? As opposed to figuratively talking too much, Pat. All right. <laughs> My inner voice is kind of mean to me. TheCardistStudio.com, thoughtful, just got easy. And better yet, you can use the promo code DEATHPOD, one word, for 10% off all orders. Do you ever lie in your resume? Huh? Look at me. Look at me when you're lying. No, you should never do that. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> but it can be daunting to, to look at a, a job listing, see everything that you have and, and things that you probably don't have. But we can fix that with my software tutor. My Software Tutor offers three levels of real-time Zoom-based courses with a live instructor. So I'm going to keep you on task. They've seen it. They've heard it. They've seen the resumes. They know the holes. But they're here to help. They'll deliver practical, functional business skills in a friendly and supportive environment. It'd be funny if it really wasn't a supportive environment. Like, when are you going to understand this? <laughs> Of course, that's not the case. That's just the anxiety or, or, or reliving fear dreams we had as children. These courses will increase your marketability. The job market couldn't be better right now. So it's a perfect time to invest in yourself and, and improve that resume. Whether you're an employee, job seeker, consultant, or contractor. You can sign up for these classes at mysoftwaretutor.com and use the promo code POD20 to save 20% off all registrations. What you look at that? All right. Enjoy that new job. So what you're what you're describing here is seeing the universe, seeing the universe in in your father's ashes, and and that in you brings out a sense of we should be kind and appreciative and and have empathy. 
I could see other people having this reaction and going the other way, becoming more drawn in or more suspicious of other people, like taking the opposite approach, which is unfortunate. Do you think that's the case? I've met people that have gone through that process for sure, Mm -hmm. but not with the images, not with the ashes. Mm. No, like the, the, the inner Stella is you find kind of you feel part of something mm-hmm. you feel connected but you also understand that that is one of the most important things that I understood but I didn't understand it conceptually I was kind of looking at it we're all the same yeah we're all wonderful? the same and yeah. you see it yeah of course there's difference in the galaxies you know but we're all the mm-hmm. same and I guess in a deep psychology seeing light and color maybe has something to do with this getting out of there like this catch of breath that people take when they see the images of of, of their loved ones yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's why we want to measure it because we believe it it can really really help people but we're we're still on also we don't believe in just belief right of course i love that just that let's have some science back it up yeah that's because we're there's we're living the era of misinformation you know and i've mm-hmm. met a lot of people that in their seek for healing end up in these very weird places and people take advantage of that that you're vulnerable i mean that's the first thing a funerary home does is take advantage of your situation so you sign a paper and you put yourself in debt mm-hmm. but i believe there's a lot of semi gurus out there or people that do not have a medical training giving experimental drugs or hallucinogenic objects i'm not saying anything of this is good or bad i'm just saying if there's no training behind or someone that can be responsible for a situation like that sometimes things go wrong because we have all these things locked up in our brains what i mentioned like i didn't want to have a partner and i didn't know why i was just like focus on my work and then i realized oh i remember i said that when my father died and now i've been missing out from like being happy with someone Mm. well it's great you were able to recognize that and and make changes that could help you become happier but this is the things that we go through when we're grieving and you put it all onto you. It's also a way of deflecting almost. Yeah. And it's what I'm saying that I experienced when I saw my father's sashes was a sense of a place. I, I was in the universe. It really reassured me that the universe is not out there. Mm-hmm. I am part of it. I am part of something and depression and, and a lot of, um, emotions that we can't deal is basically because you feel alone you don't find your place you're ashamed of yourself and for me seeing my father's sashes that amount of like strong security was the 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 game changer in my life is like but i cannot explain it in words it's like in your gut you recognize yeah more than in your gut it's like you you see who you were before and who you are now you know Mm-hmm. That's when, that, when you get to the point in your life when you say like I honestly don't have anything to prove to anyone or myself I'm okay that's, that's like a rest like you take off the backpack mm-hmm. you know it's like ha huh. and he gave me that and I remember saying like wow even in his dead even his dead was a was a sign of love was a teaching of love mm. another lesson that and he could learn. impart yeah cosmic universal beautiful lesson you know yeah how did your mom eventually react when when she found out she was very moved oh great she was very moved she was she was speechless for a bit the first 10 minutes and she 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 smiled because she she won't accept it but she was very depressed Mm. but she's a very tough woman and she keeps doing what she's been used to do but yeah she she couldn't sleep and the vibe, you know, like when someone is depressed, the entire house becomes depressing. Yeah. And when I finally show her the images, yeah, she smiled. She loves it. She has a big one, like a light box. I have one there. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And, and she has, maybe I can find it for you. But yeah, and my sister both, they were like, wow. Yeah. 
Well, it's almost yeah. like a reminder that he he's not quote unquote gone. He's he's a part of this symphony that uh, of the universe, right? Like, and that's so peaceful. You just nail it. Yeah, there's this thing I said to a friend and then my partner mm -hmm. when his father passed. I met him after his father passed, but then when we met and I showed him my project and we started talking about it, he said it the same way. It's like, ah, I now realize that my father was never here, nor he has ever left. He's in the same place he's always been. Mm -hmm in the universe and mm -hmm. he's he's in my memories but he's somewhere somehow in some form still hanging out i want to yep. show you my father's ashes oh my goodness I, i'm telling everyone who's listening you need to check these images out there there is pro, i mean you're you, this whole interview you've talked about how profound it is it's just it, it's it's jaw-dropping it's life-changing to to think yeah, it's something that has to be experienced by, you know, we're, we're in an audio medium here, but, and this is a visual thing. So I'm just encouraging people to seek it out and, and look for themselves. And, and it's a great time to have a conversation with yourself when you see these images about how do you feel? How does this, maybe you're grieving or unfortunately you will eventually grieve. How does this, it's a good way to spark a conversation about death for you. I think. For sure. Yeah. 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 And, and for me, the process of grieving impacted as birthing because it's when we are most vulnerable and we can get in touch with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And from there, I think many great things can come. Yeah. You can stop being so hard on yourself and find it. It's a path out of potentially destructive patterns like you're saying that you can find your way out of yeah yeah so how can people be involved with interstellar send messages questions uh if anyone wants to to have a if anyone lost someone and wants to have a a, a picture like there's a website they can reach out to the instagram it's me replying to the messages there's okay. no bot or random people because it's it's it comes from my own experience and it's a very delicate time you as a person who lost someone want to know that on the other side there's a person that actually understands what you're going through mm -hmm. right absolutely that's so powerful yeah so yeah get in touch i'm, I'm here <laughs> <laughs> well that's great thank you for holding space for people like that i know that's it's really really helpful when people need that yeah yeah, and, and there's some TED Talks that I gave and where you can actually understand what the images and the experience and like the process. But I guess I told you everything. <laughs> but it's I nice. To, I mean, TED Talks are fun to watch. Yeah, those are, these are small. So if you don't have time, you get like a good summary. <laughs> and yeah, before COVID, I, I used to have exhibitions in different parts of, 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 of North America and, and Europe. So soon again, who knows? Yeah, hopefully. Well, yeah. Uh, is there anything you feel like I missed related to this discovery you made or the project or just about grief that you think people should know? I think there's so much to talk about grief, but I, what I can really say is just and it sounds cheesy, but it, like we got to allow ourselves to feel like poop. Mm -hmm. It's normal, but it's impermanent. And that's mm -hmm. it. That's, that's like the thing is like, it is normal to feel like poop. And there is a way actually out because I know a lot of us can just loop in it and never get out. Mm -hmm. But that's all in our heads. And it's a pattern of behavior, mental behavior. And it can be actually the reason for like tough self-destruction. And mm. there's many ways out of it. And look for help or reach out, experience yourself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely understand that those patterns are created in our minds. And we can make decisions like, okay, I see myself thinking this way again. I'm not going to do it. 
like go make some coffee or go for a hike mm -hmm. you know stop whatever we need to, to stop this pattern of thoughts if we training stopping them sooner or later they will be gone absolutely well just checking in mentally and giving yourself the time to like slow down and check in so you notice the pattern right i feel like a lot of people may not notice the the cycle while they're in it and doing things like yoga hiking talking with friends whatever it is to recognize these patterns because once you recognize it you can there's plenty of, of mental health or, or support groups that can help you get out of that because life is short it's impermanent and it shouldn't be painful yeah no we're here to enjoy exactly yeah yeah that's important of course reach out and reach inside and and recognize that we are creating our own reality Amen. no matter how big the pain is mm -hmm. you can create a different reality for yourself yeah and that's great to know that we have more tools at our disposal than than at times we may think yeah yeah and now that everyone is more open like before it was like only funerals buried you know or like embalming or it's like well maybe that's not the answer for this generation of people living in this planet we might have different needs and we might want to explore them and become free from our mental little loops you know mm -hmm. yeah absolutely cool. Yeah. Well, Gabriella, I've really loved this conversation. Thank you so much for your time. I hope we stay in touch and, and I encourage people to reach out to Interstellar. Thank you so much for, for allowing this space and, and, and excellent mission you, you put on yourself. And thank you for doing this, talking thank about you. different subjects. Yeah. I genuinely can't believe it's 2022. I think I started the social media for that gives me anxiety and this podcast go check out that gives me anxiety my other podcast <laughs> in late january and didn't start posting until episodes until late february or early march i can't believe we're coming up on a year of that we're about 10 months right now what a ride it's been yeah i'm excited to see where these podcasts go in 2022 and i hope you're getting a lot from them. I hope you're enjoying them and they're making you feel a bit more comfortable as you think about grief in this one and anxiety and mental health in the other one. And once again, I'd like to mention and thank the sponsors. Spirit Vessel, use the promo code DEATHSPACE, one word, for free shipping on personalized urns and the celebration of life ceremony packages. The Cardis Studio, you can use the promo code DEATHPOD, one word, for 10% off all orders. And my software tutor, you can use the promo code POD20 for 20% off all orders. And thanks again to all those companies. As always, thank you so much for listening. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you on Thursday.